Hey everybody, Cats of TV, and for Pi Day 2024, we're bringing back some of our past topics by linking Pi with the Mandelbrot set and the complex logistic map. Recall that the Mandelbrot set is based on repeated iteration of this quadratic function over the complex numbers. If the iteration converges to a fixed point or repeating pattern, then the constant c is in the Mandelbrot set. If the iteration diverges, then c is outside the set. We also know that if the absolute value of the iteration is ever greater than 2, that is, leaves the circle of radius 2, it will always diverge. Visualizing the Mandelbrot set gives us this complex and iconic image, where the black portions are inside the set. The colors correspond to how quickly a particular number outside the set diverges. This is true for the set as a whole, as well as its intricate details. We can write a simple Python program that will tell us if the quadratic map will converge, or if not, how many steps it will take for the absolute value to exceed 2. When we plug in 0, our function returns minus 1, meaning that 0 is in the Mandelbrot set. If we take this complex number, the function returns 5, indicating that it's outside the set, and takes 5 steps to escape the circle of radius 2. The closer one gets to the actual set, the more steps it will take to escape. Now take a look at this interesting spot right here, where the large circle to the left and the large cardioid to the right, sometimes referred to as the butt of the Mandelbrot set, meet. They touch at only a single point, the real number minus three quarters. So going even slightly above or slightly below that point with a tiny imaginary number will lie outside the set. In 1991, computer scientist David Bohl attempted to demonstrate this by computing the number of iterations it took for the complex number minus 3 quarters plus i times epsilon to diverge for smaller and smaller values of epsilon. He noticed this very interesting pattern emerge. The smaller it got, the closer the number of iterations represented the base 10 digits of pi. We can try this with our program. The first argument is minus 3 quarters, or minus 0.75, and the second argument is our epsilon value. With epsilon at 1, our function returns 3. At 0 0.1, 33. And at smaller intervals, we get closer to the digits of pi. This leads to a very interesting formula. The number of iterations at minus 3 quarters plus i times epsilon multiplied by epsilon approaches pi as epsilon approaches 0. We can write another function to demonstrate this, multiplying the argument epsilon by the number of iterations returned by our Mandelbrot function. With smaller values, we get closer and closer to pi. And it turns out we can find a similar result at 1 quarter which lies at the butt of the Mandelbrot set. If we take the real number 1 quarter plus epsilon just to the right of this point, it will always diverge. In this case, it turns out the number of steps to diverge times the square root of epsilon equals pi. Again, we can demonstrate this with another Python function. For smaller values of epsilon, we converge to pi though much more slowly. Okay, so it would be interesting if we could find a similar connection between pi and the logistic map. We talked about the logistic map in great detail in some previous videos. We'll put a link to that right up here. Recall that the logistic map involves repeatedly applying this function to a complex number. If for a particular value a, the iteration converges to a point or a repeating pattern, we say that a is part of the set. If it diverges, it is outside the set. Visually, the set of converging values for the complex logistic map looks a lot like the Mandelbrot set, with similar intricate complexity, but with two circles instead of the circling cardioid. The two circles touch at 1. Similar to the Mandelbrot set, if we add a small imaginary amount, either above or below 1, the iterations will diverge. Now before I continue, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to this channel so that we may bring you more cultural content regularly, and please consider supporting us. Links to our merch store, Patreon, and Ko-Fi are in the description below. And if you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up and share with your friends. We can write another program that computes the iterations for the logistic map. If we start at 1 and plug in smaller and smaller values of the imaginary argument, we get a number of iterations that is closer and closer to the digits of 2 times pi. So for the logistic map, we can say that the number of iterations for i plus 1 times epsilon multiplied by epsilon is 2 pi. Now demonstrating these connections to pi was actually quite simple, but to prove the connection is much more difficult. 
It would take another 10 years after David Bowl first published his discovery until a formal proof was published by Aaron Klebanoff. Klebanoff focused his proof on the case of one half at the butt of the Mandelbrot set. Now a full explanation of the proof is beyond the scope of this video, but for those interested, we'll provide a link to it in the description below. Klebanoff concludes his proof with the conjecture that for any pinch location on the set where circles or cardioids touch, we could find a similar pi result with the associated iterations, which would truly embed pi in the structure of the Mandelbrot set. And we at CatSynth conjecture that this also holds true for the logistic complex map as well. Do you have any thoughts or questions on anything we covered? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV. You are watching CatSynth TV.